Good morning. I'm Jeff Blankenberg. I work on the Alexa team as one of our evangelists, and I spend most of my time building cool stuff for Alexa. And so I'm really excited to bring to you the August 2019 release roundup because we're going to talk about all of the new cool features and releases that have happened in August that relate to Alexa development. So let's get right into it. Um, the first thing that I want to go through is a list of the cool stuff that we've released. So let's start there. We have the Skill Flow Builder, which we'll talk about in just a moment, the App to App Account Linking, some SDK enhancements, some custom interfaces that you can use to build really cool stuff with Alexa, smart home operations, uh, the Smappy error message improvements, which is a huge, huge time saver when you're trying to debug what's going on with Smappy, and finally the Ask CLA, CLI Beta on GitHub. And so um, we'll talk about all of these in this video right now. Uh, so let's dive into the first one, which is Skillflow Builder. If you haven't had an opportunity to play with this yet, the general idea is it's a new piece of software that you can download and run on Windows or Mac, and it's a tool that allows you to build out skill flows. So imagine building a, a storybook or something that has a very obvious tree structure or flow, kind of like the image I have included here. Uh, in, in that idea, it's very easy to be able to build a skill using some simple language and some simple markup to design your entire skill, including things like slot values, custom sample utterances, all sorts of stuff. So let me just give you a quick view of what the tool looks like, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll move on to our next topic. So here's Skill Flow Builder, and as you can see, I have a, a tree over here on the left-hand side, and I have a couple of nodes. You can see that I have Start. I have learned scenes and I have learned say and reprompt. So these aren't specific names for a thing I might be building in my skill. These are actual titles that were given to these specific sections or nodes of my tree. And so as I go through this, you'll see that I have all of this markup over here on the left hand side that is start and then learn scenes and then learn say and reprompt. And so each one of these little sections um, represents one of those nodes. And so to use this, you can do simple things like when the user opens the skill, you say say. And you can say, welcome to Skillflow Builder. Let's get to know each other. What is your name? And the show node allows me to decide what's going to be shown on the screen of a device that has a screen, like an Echo Show 5 or an Echo Show or even the Echo Spot. And then finally, we have then. And then is what decides what we're going to do. So in this case, we've defined that there's a slot named player name that is of US first name type. Uh, and then I'm going to listen for one of these kinds of phrases. So I might have my name is, or maybe the player just says their name, or they'll say call me Jeff, maybe if, that's, uh, if that happens to be their name. And then I indicate here that I'm going to move on to learn scenes, which is my next section here. And in this section, you can see that Alexa is going to say, and it's going to say, great, welcome to the framework, Jeff, let's get started. And so it allows me to use these individual pieces and slots and values to build an entire experience around moving my user from A to B to C very very cool you can also notice that we do have other things that happen in here so if we want to learn about monetization for example um, we can see that each one of these little sections has um, their own little um, startup sections so again when the user says something like uh, buy item or something like that those things fall into this um, this purchase here this learn monetization sorry um, and this allows the user to say, tell me about a product or something like that. So there is a lot of power here and there's a lot of very, very cool things that you can do. And like I said, this is available for Windows and Mac and is available today. So let's talk about how we get there. You can go to alexa.design slash skillflow builder um, and this will allow you to go directly to the page that has um, links for download. So as an example, I have the browser page open right here and you can see that I have, this is the page you'll go to if you go to that URL. And right here we have use the skillflow builder editor. Um, if you want to get a little more intense with it and live uh, entirely on the command line, there is also a core uh, build of this that is available for you to use uh, as part of the AWS CLI, and you can go through the instructions to set that up here. Uh, but if you just want to use the tool and play around with it, that is um, the Skillflow Builder Editor, uh, and you'll want to make sure to check both out if you're, uh, if you're interested in trying either of those. Okay, so that's Skillflow Builder. That's very cool um, and something that has been kind of fun to play with so far. The next one is app to app account linking. So we've talked about account linking in the past on these channels and account linking in its general sense is I have a set of users that come to my website already um, and I want them to be able to use my Alexa skill and I wanna know who they are and I wanna tie into all of the things that I have going on on my back end. Um, and so the, the way to do this traditionally was just through account linking, right? The user would uh, have to find your skill, they would start your skill, uh, they would enable your skill and then they would be able to go into the Alexa app 
uh, where they could do account linking. And this would allow them to enter uh, through OAuth their username and credentials that they have on your servers. A uh, secure OAuth connection would authenticate them. You would pass back a token. And then you would use that token to identify them in any other interactions. And so if they wanted to order a pizza, they could just say, give me a pizza. And you already know on your servers their credit card information. You already know their delivery address. Um, and so it's very easy for them to make that purchase um, just by... Uh, a simple phrase because everything else has been handled behind the scenes. We don't have to worry about how they're going to pay for it. That's all been handled. So that's the, the base idea behind account linking. But with app to app account linking, this is actually allowing us to enable to take this a step further. So imagine looking at the this the first shot here on the left where, where my mouse is and it says you've successfully set up a Carrefour account. So imagine going to a place that where you can um, order cars like taxis and you go to their website and you set up an account and then you see this on the screen. And all the user would have to do is click allow. It would take them to one screen that would allow them to link their account to Alexa. Um, and then they would be right back to your app and be able to say, okay, cool, now you can order uh, our cars from Carfu directly from Alexa, right? It's a nice, easy process to take them from your app uh, or from your website um, and directly move them into enabling your skill on Alexa so that they already do all the account linking and everything like that. Uh, they don't have to go find your skill first. They can start with the place that you already found them in your app or your website, whatever. So this is a really, really powerful thing. And again, if we, t if we look at the browser for this, I have each of these tabs open as we go through them. Um, you can see in here that they have different flows. So maybe they don't have the Alexa app installed on their phone. They can still go through this process and you can see that they can log in using the Amazon app. Um, and then it talks about, well, let's go back to that. Um, we can go back to which flow to implement, how it works, all the processes, all the technical docs, everything you would need to know is on this page. And you can find it all at alexa.design slash app to app. So that's app to app account linking. Very cool, exciting. Um, and if you have that existing infrastructure of users or um, have an OAuth uh, service already set up, this is a perfect natural way to get users directly from your website or your app into using your Alexa skill as well. All right. Next up is the SDK enhancements. So what's cool about this is that we've just basically made it cooler to be able to use some of the other external um, libraries and frameworks that are available. Uh, and so we wanted to make sure that those were working with our SDK. So I don't have a screenshot for this. This is very code based. Um, but if I come over to the browser, I'll show you exactly what this looks like. So in here, uh, we have now ex a support for express.js and Jinja. And so in here, there's also a bunch of other stuff that we have general availability of Django and Flask. Uh, to support our Python SDK, uh, which has been released in, for beta since April. So as you go through this, this short article, you'll be able to find out exactly what things are available. And like I said, um, we have SDKs for Node and Python. Uh, and so supporting Express.js and the Jinja template on Python are both really, really useful, valuable things that developers have been asking for. And we wanted to make sure that we were coming through for you on those. So that stuff is now available. Um, and you can read up more on this specific page about what's exactly involved. All right, up next is custom interfaces. This is not something that I've had an opportunity to play with yet, but I think it's so cool. And I'm hoping that this picture kind of illustrates what this is. This is described better in the article at that URL, alexa.design slash custom interfaces. But the general idea here is imagine building a smart basketball hoop. Um, so you want to be able to keep track of how many points a person has scored and have Alexa play along as the user does that. Well, we, by using custom interfaces now with Alexa gadgets, you can set up things like this so that as a user scores a point, Alexa says, great shot, that's a new high score, and have an interaction between some new device that you've created that uses these custom interfaces uh, and talks directly to Alexa to allow, allow that kind of play along experience. So let's take a quick look at what the page looks like for this, just so you're familiar with it. But in here, you can see that this is just a, a blog post about it, but we get right into what the Alexa Gadgets Toolkit is and how it works. But there's some other great examples here. Imagine having Alexa fly a drone for you. Alexa, tell my drone to fly in a figure eight, right? That might be a very cool thing to do. I wanted to make sure my device didn't just go off. Um, you might also say, Alexa, tell Game Printer to give me a Sudoku puzzle. So oh, I did it that time, so we'll see what happens. Um, or having a dog toy that counts how many times your dog plays fetch. All of these are great examples of how you could use custom interfaces with Alexa gadgets to be able to make these things happen um, in some new piece of hardware that hasn't been thought of before. So very, very cool stuff. And if you're into building hardware to building IoT, I can't recommend enough looking into this. All right, our next one is smart home operations. So this isn't groundbreaking like some of the other stuff that we've been looking at so far, uh, but this is really valuable for those of you that are building smart home, uh, smart home skills. 
one of the things that's been missing is the ability to really get into the analytics of what's going on within your skills. And so if I look at view skill metrics, which again you can get to by going to alexa.design slash smart home operations, um, you'll see in here that we now have these operational metrics. And if I scroll down to these, you can see that this is specifically talking about metrics for a smart home skill. So these are things like device discovery, capability directives, query state requests, um, and they dive into like how long did it take to control the device? Um, what kind of aggregation periods do we have? Uh, and so this is really, really cool stuff if you're building smart home uh, skills because you haven't had access to this data before. You maybe you had to roll your own system to come up with these kind of metrics. Um, so this is all available now uh, as part of the Alexa dashboard, uh, the Alexa developer dashboard. So I recommend checking this one out as well. Uh, again, if you're building smart home skills, these are the kind of metrics you've been asking for. And so we're really trying to make sure that we're coming through uh, in a way that makes sense for all of our developers. Okay. The next one is Smappy Error Code Improvements. This is another huge one that doesn't have a very good picture, um, but I think it makes life a whole lot easier. So let me show you what that looks like. And again, you can visit this by going to alexa.design slash Smappy Error Codes, where Smappy is all capital letters. Uh, so if I jump over to this page, you can see that I have, well, I guess I scrolled down already. Come on, okay. So the idea here is that this is what an error message used to look like when we were talking to Smappy invalid data type in the skill manifest. This is an error, I will agree with that, but it wasn't necessarily something that gave me any indication about what might be going wrong or what I had broken or what I needed to fix. And so you can see that now, that same error message looks something like this, where we still know that there's an invalid data type, but we also know that we're talking about publishing information, the distribution countries in that publishing information, and that we're providing um, the wrong kind of data to that specific um, that specific value in our distribution countries. So it's very, it's much more informative about what's going on with our error, what went wrong, uh, and how we can go about fixing it, which again, solves time, saves time, uh, and allows us to move forward and get things uh, working in the way that we expect them to. Okay, so there's nothing terribly exciting about this. There's nothing that, like you, for you to go run and do right now, but I think you'll find as you're working with the CLI and Smappy, um, that your errors will become uh, much more useful. And the one thing that you'll want to do if you haven't done it already is make sure that you update your CLI. Uh, because if you don't have the latest version of the CLI, you probably won't have the latest version of the errors either. So uh, it's important to make sure that you keep those things updated. All right, we'll move on to our last one. And in this case is the Ask CLI beta on GitHub. And so the Ask CLI beta is a new version of the CLI that we're working on that we have uh, released as open source. And so we're asking for people to contribute, to think about all the additional ways that they might be able to um, add code or functionality to the CLI. And so uh, if we find that over on, over on GitHub, you'll notice that it actually lives in a world called Alexa Labs. And Alexa Labs is a separate place that we keep a bunch of our experimental stuff that is not necessarily ready for production, um, but that is something that we're playing with. So we have a lot of like sample skills that aren't necessarily done yet, um, things that we're working on or playing with. We also have a lot of our um, content that you might find at events and things uh, living here as well. So lots of kind of experimental interesting stuff happen here at the labs, but the Ask CLI I think is really interesting because it, it, they really did a nice clean job of putting this in here. So they show you how to install it, they show how to use it. If you've used the CLI before, you've seen um, ASK in it, and that's how you would start the uh, traditional uh, Alexa Skills Kits CLI. But in this case, uh, we have ASKX, and that is using this new one um, that allows you to um, use this new CLI uh, and take advantage of the code that's, that's running here. And so um, I haven't gone through all of the new features that are baked into this yet, uh, but I do know that they're really looking for ways to enhance and grow this as an open source project. And then ultimately some of those things will move in to the traditional CLI eventually. So uh, I think this is an exciting time to think about Alexa when we're moving things like our CLI to open source, uh, because it means that we're really looking for um, the people that are using this the most, our community, the people out in the world building things for Alexa, we want to make sure that they are having their voice heard and that they're getting the features that they want built. And if that means, you know, opening a pull request and sending that into the CLI, that's something that we're open to. We're looking for that kind of feedback and that kind of contribution uh, so that we can make this a tool that everybody loves to use. So with that, that is a, a quick wrap up of um, what we did in August. Um, I hope you learned something new. I hope you found something cool. And I'm really looking to some of the stuff that's coming out in September. So again, thank you for joining us. 
Um, we look forward to every month having an opportunity to talk with you. And since you're joining us here on Twitch, we would like to let you know that we are on here quite regularly. Um, we have office hours that happen every Tuesday in English. Uh, every Tuesday afternoon in English, and every Wednesday morning in Spanish. So if you'd like to join either of those and ask questions from our uh, solutions architects and evangelists about what's going on with Alexa and how you can solve your problems or work through an issue that you might have in your skill, this is the place to be. Uh, so make sure you hit subscribe, uh, follow along, you'll get notifications when we're on. Um, and I think there's, there's quite a bit more programming that we're hoping to add to this channel. So if you have any recommendations, if you have any feedback, please send them to us. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, we want to make this the most rewarding developer experience you can have. So thank you again for tuning in, and we will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.